Blender 4.5 is in beta and it will be released very soon, around July 15th. This means that the new features are now set in stone, so let's see what's new in rigging and animation. One of the big news, and you'll hear a lot of hype around it, is that Vulkan is now stable. And Vulkan promises better overall viewport performance. And who wouldn't like that, right? To enable Vulkan, you can go to Edit Preferences, System, and Backend, and switch Backend to Vulkan. This requires a restart, so Save Preferences and Restart Blender. And the biggest improvement you should see, at least at this stage, is faster texture loading when you switch to Material Preview. As you probably saw, my materials loaded very quickly here. Of course, this is a simple scene, it should be even more obvious in heavier scenes. I watched a bunch of hypey videos about Blender Vulkan, and they promised that everything will be faster, faster playback, faster subdivisions. By the way, if you like less hypey and more objective information, subscribe to CG Dive. Unfortunately, in my tests, I did not see this performance boost. Especially with tricked characters, I got the exact same frames per second and the same overall performance when posing, animating or playing back an animation. On top of that, I had some crashes with heavy scenes. Nevertheless, Vulkan is the future. It will make Blender more performant. So give it a go and if you get some crashes or other issues, report them. That will help this new technology develop faster. Now let's focus on the actual rigging and animation features. Blender has a couple of bone display modes, which are available under the armature tab, viewport display, display as, and we have octahedral, stick, b-bone, and so on. What's new in this version is that now each bone can have its own display as setting. If we go to the bone tab, viewport display, you'll see display as, and by default it's set to armature defined. Armature defined means that this bone is going to follow the global display as setting under the armature tab. But now I can switch this bone to B bone, this one to stick, this one to envelope, and so on. So this is almost like having these special predefined shapes for individual bones. In practice, I'll probably use it something like this, these are my deforming bones, and I'm going to set them to always be shown as octahedral, and apply this to all bones. And for MCH bones, B-bone display mode is often the best one, so I'm going to set it like this. Okay, now it doesn't matter which global display mode I'm going to choose, because all of these bones are overriding the global setting for each individual bone. Here is something that I'm not quite sure about. If you have experience with Blender Rigging, you should recognize these colors right away. The yellow one is an IK constraint, and the green one is some other constraint. These two constraint colors have been used in Blender for more than a decade now, and everybody is used to them. However, here is what I see in Blender 4.5. We have this pinkish color for IK, and bluish for other constraints. But the weird part is, there is nothing in the release notes for 4.5 mentioning these color changes. So I'm not sure if it's something that the developers are playing with, and then for the official release, they'll bring back the old colors, or is this going to stick? In my opinion, this will definitely confuse a lot of people, especially more casual Blender users. Okay, next I'll split the screen here and set it to driver editor. And when working with the curves inside the driver editor, I like to disable this snapping setting, because when it's enabled, moving these points around is extremely unintuitive. And until now, snapping in the driver's editor and in the animation editor were linked. Enabling this option would automatically enable this one as well. But this is no more. These snapping options are now separate, so personally I will disable snapping in the driver's editor and I'll enable it in the animation editor. In the animation editor, you almost always want to have it enabled. Because if I create a keyframe, when this setting is enabled and I move this frame, it will automatically snap on the keyframes. And 99% of the time, that is exactly what you want. When you disable it, you can kind of move the keyframe between frames. And usually, you don't want to do that. So enable snapping here. And by default, it will already be enabled. You just have to be careful not to disable it, which used to be very easy to do when working with drivers. And speaking of snapping, there is also a whole new snapping option for the playhead. Right now, I can just move the playhead normally. 
But if I go to playhead here and choose use snapping, you'll see that I can now snap to keyframes or strips. And now as I move the playhead and move it near the keyframe, it will snap to the keyframe. And that's defined by this snap distance. As soon as I get within 20 pixels of the keyframe, it will snap to it. I can also enable markers and now it will also snap to my marker. Let me shift and click on keyframes and strips. We also have seconds. For that, I'll have to enable use timecode. And now if I zoom in, you'll see how the playhead snaps exactly at the seconds. And we also have frames and strips is probably useful in the NLA, for example. Yeah, here is how it snaps exactly to the beginning and end of the strip. And that will most likely work similarly in the video sequencer. By the way, this character in this rig are from my course Rigging Isn't Scary. It's free here on YouTube. So check it out if you want to learn the fundamentals of rigging in Blender. The shape key editor also got a couple of simple but very nice improvements. Until now, if you wanted to duplicate a single shape key in Blender, you would have to enable that shape key exactly to one and then go through all of the other shape keys and make sure that all of them are at zero. And then you go to this menu here and new shape from mix. The problem here is that if you had any other shapes enabled to a certain degree, this will create a mix of all of the enabled shape keys. But now we have a new duplicate shape key operator. So let's say that I want to duplicate exactly mouthwide.l. I can even turn this off and then randomly turn on some of the other shape keys. But if I just have this selected and go to duplicate shape key, this will be an exact copy of mouthwide.l. This is a simple but much needed feature. And here's another very nice new operator for shape keys. In Blender, it is common to create your basic shape key and then your first actual shape key and then start shaping it. Then you can add another key and so on. But there is another workflow that is very popular in the industry and that is having one mesh for each shape. So here I have mouth left and mouth right. I can select them, then shift select my actual character and go to shape keys, join as shapes. And so until now, if I wanted to tweak mouth L, I would have to shape it. Then shift select the character, go to join as shapes again, delete the old one and then rename this one. But now we have an operator that will just update the shape keys. I'll undo. Now select this head, shift select the main head and just go to update from objects. Now the shape will be updated and actually I can reshape this one and then this one as well and then select both Then shift select the main head and update from objects and that will update all of the shapes. Now let me show you something in the asset browser and the pose library. It's really cool. Let's say that because this head looks so cool now, I want to save it as an asset. So I'll select it and find it here in the outliner and then right click and mark as asset. Now if I go to the asset browser, I'll find my asset with this very uninspiring default thumbnail. Until now, that's all we got unless we took a screenshot, saved it as an image and then we could load a custom image from here. But now I can go to this menu, capture screenshot preview and just drag here. And if I hold shift, I can make this thumbnail non-square release. And here is the new thumbnail. Very nice. This makes setting thumbnails so much easier. And this is even more important for the pose library. Let's create a stretchy pose with this control and then pose, create pose asset. The pose library by default does not create any thumbnails, but now I can find it here in the asset browser, select my pose, go to preview, capture screenshot and done. And check out this interface change. In the properties editor, we now have this drop-down menu 
and we can enable and disable the individual tabs. So maybe you just want tool, or if you're working on a rig, maybe you just want data bone and bone constraints. It should come in handy if you really like to optimize and customize your interface. If you're importing and exporting your characters between Blender and other applications, you may be interested in the import and export updates. Many of the file formats got various small improvements. GLTF always gets a lot of love. But here what's interesting is if we go to import, there is FBX experimental and below it is our usual FBX import. So if we click this, you'll see that the settings are slightly different now. As you probably know, the FBX importer and exporter in Blender is a bit of a hack and the new one, I believe, is a slightly better hack. The Blender documentation says that this new FBX importer should be faster, but the old one is probably still more reliable. What I would really like to see is a better FBX exporter, but for now we are stuck with the old one. That's all for Blender 4.5, rigging and animation. Let me know which new feature you're most excited about, whether it's rigging and animation or something else.